hope you can see. Okay, now I hope you can see my screen. Uh, and um, yes, I, I can. Get, I will get started. Thank you, everyone, for awesome. your time today. Uh, let me just open up this presentation. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, okay. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about studying abroad in Japan. Okay, um, my name is Xiaotin. Um, you can see my name here. Uh, I am running an organization called Study Abroad Research Institute. We're an NGO that's based in Tokyo, in Japan. And we're here to help uh, non-Japanese students, foreign students to consider how to study in Japan. So today I'm going to give you a brief presentation, maybe about 30 minutes about how, uh, how, why you should consider studying abroad in Japan and how we can help you do that, okay? And after our presentation, uh, we have some time for question and answers. So today I'm going to talk about the following, okay? So first I'm gonna give you a little bit of self-introduction, okay? Uh, what is our organization about? Then we're gonna go into the meat of the presentation, which is about the benefits of studying in Japan from two different aspects. One is how much money you can earn after you graduate from a university in Japan. And second is how much does it cost for you to get a, a degree in Japan, okay? And last, after we talk about the benefits, I'm going to talk a little bit about how our organization is going to help you or how we can help you uh, to uh, study abroad in Japan, okay? Okay, let's first start with my self-introduction. So what is our organization? Okay, we're a nonprofit organization that helps students who never thought about study abroad to study abroad, okay? Uh, in particular, we focus on African students and help them to study in university in Japan because we are based in Tokyo in Japan, okay? Uh, we're a nonprofit organization, we're not a business, so we're not here to take any money from you. We do this entirely for free. Okay. So what the, how does uh, our organization work? Well, we talk to students like you about universities in Japan. And we also talk to the different schools and governments in Japan so that they'll accept more students like you. So you can see here, we talk to the students, we talk to the universities, and we talk to the government, okay? So we talk to different people so that we create the right environment for more students to come to Japan to study. Now, why do we do this, okay? Why are we doing this? <laughs> uh, the reason is based on my personal experience. So this is me. I'm gonna do a little bit of self-introduction here. So I was born in China. I moved to Japan when I was five years old. I moved to the US when I was 12 years old. And I have experience studying abroad in different countries. I studied in the US, in Australia, in the UK, and now I am a PhD student in Japan, in the University of Tokyo. Before I came back to Tokyo to do my PhD, I was living in Tanzania for two years, working for a nonprofit organization there. And when I was in Tanzania, I applied for the degree, I applied for the program to study for the degree in the University of Tokyo. So I had personal experience applying to a Japanese university from Africa. So that's why I have a personal experience doing this. So I'm here to help you do the same. So that's a little bit of self-introduction on my side. Let's, uh, let me go to the meat of this presentation, which is the benefits of studying in Japan. So first, I want to talk about how much money you can earn after you graduate from a Japanese university. I think uh, to earn a good salary is probably one of the biggest consideration for people who are considering studying abroad. So this should be the main benefit for you to consider studying abroad in Japan as well. So the salaries in Japan are quite high for university graduates. Let me give you some numbers. So in 2019, this was from two years ago, right before the COVID pandemic started, 
the annual and uh, the average yearly salary in Japan is about 40,000 US dollars. Okay. For people who live in Tokyo, where I live, the salary is slightly higher, to, uh, about 50,000 US dollars. For people who work in high demand jobs like IT consultants, they make even more. IT consultants, for example, make about $58,000 on average. And these are average salaries for people with a bachelor's degree. If, if you have a graduate degree, like master's or PhD, you respectively get paid more than 23% more or 42% more than the figures that you saw here. Okay, so you get even paid more on average if you have a graduate degree. So it's fairly good amount of money for uh, salaries in Japan. And it's uh, going to get better. The salary will get better in the future after the COVID, COVID pandemic, well, fortunately uh, settles down in the near future. Why is that? Let me give you some reasoning. So in Japan, jobs are relatively easy to get because there are many jobs for applicants to jobs. So this is a graph of the number of jobs available for each person applying for a job in Japan. In 2019, the latest data available, there was two and a half jobs for each person who's applying for a job. So you can see that there are very few workers, but there are many jobs available. So there are, there are looking, many employers here are looking for foreign workers because there is not enough workers just in Japan today. And in the future, Japan will need even more workers because the population here is declining. So here's a graph with Japan's population. Today, there is about 130 million people. So we're here at 2021, 130 million people. Then it's projected to decrease to 85 million by 2100. So you see that Japan's population is decreasing, so there will be fewer and fewer workers available, which is why they're looking for more and more non-Japanese workers to work here. And as, uh, as there are fewer workers available, everybody will get paid higher salaries, okay? So in the future, the salaries might be even higher than today. Okay, so future salary. Uh, so that is how much you can make after you graduate from Japanese university. But how much does it cost to do the uh, university degree in Japan? Okay, let me talk about a little bit of, uh, about the cost of studying here. So getting in getting a degree in Japan can be much cheaper than in some other study abroad destinations. I give you some personal examples. So. Uh, Yale is one of the schools I studied um, before. This is in the U.S. Okay, so in the U.S. at uh, Yale, uh, the school is about forty-four thousand dollars per year. So it's quite expensive, as you can see. In LSE, which is the school I attended in the U.K., the school is about thirty-eight thousand dollars to fifty-one thousand dollars, depending on the program. So it's about similar to the price in the US. And in Australia, I attended the University of Sydney where the degree is about somewhere between $26,000 to $41,000. So it's not all that different among these three countries. Okay, they're all about similar price for tuition. Now in the University of Tokyo where I study today is much cheaper. It's only about $5,000 a year. So you can see compared to the other three countries, the University of Tokyo is much cheaper to study. But some of you might say that $5,000 is still a lot of money. Okay, How do you pay $5,000 a year for school? Well, Japan has a lot of scholarships available. Maybe I would say maybe more than other countries. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of about the scholarships here giving you the example of the annual scholarship pamphlet that is provided by the Japan Student Services Organization. 
So the Japan Student Services Organization is a government organization that helps foreign students in Japan. And it produces this little pamphlet every year that lists all the major scholarships that are available in Japan for foreign students. So to look at the 2019-2020 scholarship, there are the following examples. So there are many types in this pamphlet. The first type is a national government scholarships given by the Japanese national government. This gives you free tuition, so you don't have to pay your school fees. It gives you a round trip airplane ticket from your home country for free. And it gives you about $1,400 per month in cash. So you can pay for your living expenses while living in Japan. That's national government scholarship. There are also more than 30 regional government scholarships. So your school will be located in a particular city uh, or a particular part of Japan. So the government of that particular region will have their own scholarship. These scholarships also give free tuition, so you don't have to pay for school fees. And they give close to $1,000 a month in cash so that you can pay for your living expenses in Japan. Aside from these government scholarships, this pamphlet also lists more than 90 private scholarships. These are usually through private foundations, which are related to private companies in Japan. So different companies will provide scholarships to foreign students. On average, uh, these scholarships give about $2,000 a month in cash so that the students can pay for their living expenses and school fees. Okay. And these are just examples from this pamphlet. And this pamphlet in itself already lists more than 120 different scholarships. But this pamphlet is not everything. There are many scholarships that are available, but are not listed in this pamphlet. So if you search harder, you'll find hundreds upon hundreds of scholarships available for international students in Japan. But aside from getting scholarships, foreign students, many foreign students who come here also work on the side while they are studying. The Japanese student uh, visa allows students to work part-time up to 28 hours a week. So many people study, do their homework, and they also work about 28 hours a week. Some of the popular jobs for students include English teaching, which pays about $39 per hour. People work in stores or restaurants, which pays about $14 an hour. And some people work in construction or factory or warehouse jobs, which pays about $28 an hour. So you can see if you work about 28 hours a week at these different wages, you make a decent amount of money. Okay, And the money you can save or to use for your living and school fees in Japan. Now, those are the benefits for you to study in Japan. At the end, I want to just go over how our organization can help you a little bit in terms of getting to a university in Japan. Now, we can help you in several ways. One is help you find a place to learn the Japanese language. Many of you are wondering, well, you don't speak Japanese, how do you survive in Japan? Many of the programs available are only English. But daily life in Japan is mostly 100% Japanese. And most of the employ uh, employers and most of the work available require, to speak, uh, require you to speak at least some Japanese. So it's important that you learn the language at least to a some degree so that you can survive in Japan and find good work both during your studies and after your graduation. So we can point you to the right resources, such as online classes, for you to learn Japanese. Now we can tell you a little bit about where to apply, because we work with different universities in Japan. 
different universities uh, tell us about their different programs and we can tell you about those programs. We can show you how to apply. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are different programs from the universities we work with and there are different ways to apply to these programs. Each program has a different application process. So we can tell you a little bit about how to apply to these. Lastly, we can provide you some advice on how to live in Japan. I'm sure all of you have never been to Japan. And uh, if you come here, it will be your first time living here. And uh, surely living in Japan will be very different from Ghana. And uh, those differences you'll have to navigate. So we can provide you at least, at least some advice and help when it comes to how to survive in your daily life. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we have partnerships with many Japanese universities. Uh, we have contact with the admissions officers at these universities. And these admission officers give us information about the programs that are available to foreign students. So that we can provide the information about those programs to you. So you have the tips and advice that you need to get into the program easier. And uh, that's why it's probably easier for you to contact us and work through our partner universities than if you are to find information yourself. And of course, I suggest you do that as well because we only work with a limited number of universities and there are hundreds upon hundreds of universities in Japan. So aside from our partner universities, you can probably also look at, look at uh, different universities in Japan yourself consider other options. Yeah, but we're here to help as much as possible. And that's it. That's uh, all I wanted to introduce to you today. Uh, we have our website and we have different social media, which I will share uh, later on so that you have access to these. Uh, we periodically update these uh, different social media and our website when we have new information from our uh, partner universities. So yeah, please uh, follow them and uh, you can see the most updated information. Okay, that's uh, all the, everything I wanted to present today. Uh, now I want to take any questions, if there are any. Anyone has any questions? All right, thank you so much, Zolcheng. So um, I don't have a question though. I just want my uh, my students to ask questions. So, um, okay, let me ask a question like this. Um, so what are some of the requirements uh, for you to study in Japan, for example, um, with let's say um, IGs, A-levels, WASI, SAT, is there all they have to write? on a different external exam to be able to get into uh, Japan universities? So the basic requirement, first of all, uh, so let's first talk about bachelor's programs. So for bachelor's programs, you will need to at least graduate from high school, right? Uh, or something equivalent to high school. So you need to have a high school degree or associate degree, something that shows uh, you have completed uh, uh, education leading up to university okay uh, so that's a very basic requirement the part of uh, uh, for master's and phd programs uh, for master's program you need to have at least a bachelor's degree okay? and for phd programs you need to have at least a master's degree okay so these are basic requirements uh, for the application process uh, the package the application package you could usually include several things one is proof of your uh, grade from your previous school, right? So uh, from a bachelor's, for bachelor's, that means your grade, grades from high school. And for graduate programs, that means your degree, your gra grades from university, okay? And then uh, it'll include several essays that you need to write 
and the essay topics are quite different for each program. But usually they are about your motivation to study in the particular programs that you applied for, why you chose the university that you're applying for, and your future career plans. Okay, so those are essays. Uh, they require sometimes they require recommendation letters from your teachers in the past to show that you're competent and you're ready to attend a university in Japan. And uh, lastly, as Andrews mentioned, there will be some tests. Okay, some schools they use uh, standard tests like SAT. Some schools don't have any test requirements. And some schools have their own tests that you need to go through. So that's quite different from school to school. And our website, which I will link to Andrews later on, uh, we have a list of our partner universities and uh, the application requirement for each university. So for details, you can see there on what is required for each program. I hope that answers the question. Any other? Yeah. Also, yeah. Any also, other, any other questions? Um, so, you know, sometimes when we are, let's say for undergraduate programs, when we are applying, we sometimes we are bothered. Like we don't want to have, let's say, a D or let's say a C. So is that also something that uh, schools in Japan uh, are focused on. And then there is also this thing that happens. So for example, irrespective of uh, whatever, um, let's say international certificate you have, let's say for example, you have uh, Cambridge or whatever, you are required to send your grades to a system so that they can convert like to an organization. Usually it's called the World Education Service for them to convert your grades to match up with what is it in their um, in the in the country so does that also apply in this case so of course uh, as you, as you imply the the grading system in every country and sometimes for every school is quite different so a grade in one country probably means something totally different in another country and that's no different here in japan um many schools uh, many schools even in japan have different grading system there is a, sometimes there is no standardization, okay? Um, so um, when you submit your grades, you have to explain how, how the grading works. Um, usually uh, schools in Japan, they don't have a system like they do in other countries. It's usually just part of the application that you send by something like email or regular mail. Um, if, if the schools have questions about how the grades are calculated, they will usually ask. But um, if they don't ask a basic explanation about how the grading works, what the grades mean, that's enough. Yeah, yeah usually there is no system for you to go through to, to standardize it, like in the UK. I think UK okay. is much more strict about this kind of things <laughs> yeah yeah um i i don't know whether i saw living expenses though but then like um in terms of rent um what is the rate like for students because it's also a factor that you also consider yeah so yeah i, I did not put the rent information but uh, i guess i can explain it a little bit here um for usually for foreign students who live in Japan, they stay in dormitories in universities or shared houses where they share the apartment or share a room with other students. So those are the two cheapest options I would say that's available for foreign students. For university dormitories, okay. um, it costs something around 200 to $300 a month. Uh, inclusive okay. of expenses mm -hmm. like uh, electricity, water, um, internet. Uh, so those are usually included. Uh, and uh, shared houses, they might be slightly more expensive, maybe $300, $400, $500 a month. Yeah. 
So the expenses okay. look something like this. Okay. All right. Awesome. So um, when you also consider, for example, like when we apply, um, in terms of visa processing and working on all those stuff, yeah. Especially since we are okay. So let me say from Ghana. Do you have any idea? Yeah. So so in in Japan, the student visa process is started by the school. So everything begins here with the program application. Uh, so you first apply to the university into a certain program that you want to uh, study in. And then if you're fortunate enough to be accepted, that's when the school will start two processes. One is a process for applying to scholarships, okay? The school will tell you, okay, you're eligible to apply to these kind of scholarships. And the school will tell you about the scholarships and when you can apply to them. So after you're accepted into the program, you start applying for scholarships. And after you're accepted into the program, the school will start the visa application process on your behalf. Once the school finishes, once, once the school starts uh, working with the government offices to start the application for visa, then the school will ask you to submit some documents, things like your passport, um, application form, things like that, that they need for the visa application. So once the school okay. side is finished, then the school will issue you um, a letter to say that, okay, uh, we, you have been approved for the visa. Then you will take your passport and that letter that was given to you from the school to your local embassy in Ghana to get the visa stamped on your passport. So yeah, so, so basically you cannot start the visa process you, uh, yourself, the school has to start. <laughs> okay, okay, great. Awesome, so um, any more questions guys? Okay. Okay, well, I think no one has questions, so uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, That's no, great. no problem. I will send a follow up email with my contact as well as our social media information and the list of our uh, uh, partner universities. So you can take a look okay. at okay. Um, how, how you can apply. And if you have any questions later on, you are always welcome to contact me uh, for answers. Okay, awesome. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. So thank you very much. Uh, I might organize another session. Yeah. So I'll send that over to you as an email so that we can have another session with another group. Okay. Uh, Sounds great. Uh, potential. Awesome. Okay. All right. Thank you great. so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Everyone have a great day. Right. Bye bye now. All right. Bye bye. Bye. bye.